25 Among Us myths tested to see if they work. Since Among Us doesn't have a tutorial, a lot of what you learn is hearsay. I mean, even with other myth-busting videos out there, I still see more and more untested gossip in the comments. So today, let's put these rumors to the test to find the truth. And hey, YouTube scripture says it's impossible to subscribe and like the video at the same time. So if you want to prove that's a myth, simultaneously slap those two buttons down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one. Seeing an imposter vent is a huge advantage for the crewmate. I mean, it's a way to pick out the killer without anyone having to die. Although sometimes it's hard to catch them in the act, so wouldn't it be cool if you were able to see them vent through walls? Well, as it turns out, that's entirely possible. Even with the crewmate's limited vision, you're still able to see the imposter jump in and out of a vent. Meaning that even if you weren't in the room where it happens, you might be able to win this duel after all. Number two. The seconds before a crewmate reports the body can be really tense. Now obviously, as the silent killer, you don't want that kind of situation, and you want to prevent them from reporting. So a theory I've seen floated around is that you can't report a body while the door is closed. And as you can see right here, that's entirely correct. And really, it makes sense, if you're inside of a locked room, you're not exactly making it over to the cafeteria. So if you as the imposter are trying to cut down on reporting, then locking the door behind you might be a solid way. Number three. In this game, certain tasks are synonymous with certain maps. Whether that's admin card on Skeld, or in this case, insert keys on Polis. And while anecdotally it might seem to always appear on your chore list, that's not a part of the code. But the key distinction here is that it is a common task, meaning that if one person has it, then everyone else on the ship has it. So if you didn't see a player do keys, don't immediately assume that they're the imposter. It might have just not shown up that round. Number four. While keys isn't always a given on Polis, it is something that many players tell you to look out for. And the reason is that many people believe that you can use it to tell who the imposter is. Which, as it turns out, that piece of advice is based in fact. You see, the slot that the player inserts the key into corresponds with the order that they join the lobby. Which means, if you have a pro player, they might be able to pinpoint out who the imposter is if they don't remember which key slot they inserted into. Meaning if you remember which key number you did, that's enough to prove you innocent. And more importantly, prove someone guilty. Number 5. As a crewmate, one of your top goals is to find out who the imposter is before any bodies hit the floor. So that's why people are starting to look into the potential of identifying the imposter based off heartbeat alone. And while I admit that sounds great, it's not exactly proven, the info's all over the place. As far as we can conclude, the heartbeats seem to be randomized, and there's not a lot of info out there anyways, so that's the safest to assume. And until we know more about heartbeat patterns, it's definitely safer to use vitals to catch self-reports instead. Number 6. Among Us is a game chock full of little visual details, so I can understand why some people would be extra vigilant to look out for these. But sometimes it's just barking up the wrong tree. For example, one idea that's floated around is that the tube lights and shields will pulse faster when the power is diverted there. But as you can plainly see when we put the comparison up, there's no noticeable difference. This one's confirmed false, but I can't say it wouldn't be cool if it was added in. Number 7. Visual tasks are a dead giveaway for the imposter. So that's why some lobbies now will turn off that feature, because it makes things too easy. But that said, is it still possible to prove someone innocent through a medbay scan? Well, yeah, actually. Keep in mind this is pretty situational since it requires both you and the person scanning to have the submit scan task. But when it's successful, you'll see on your screen, waiting for, and then their username. And at that point, even without having to see the visual effects, you still know that the person scanning right in front of you is the real deal. Number 8. As a crewmate, getting through your tasks as fast as possible is the name of the game. So anytime that you're able to shave off any extra seconds, it's a huge help. So that's gotta be why there's a story for speedrunning through the shield task on Skeld. The idea is that instead of doing one at a time, you might actually be able to get multiple of these done at once. And as you can see, if we line up our mouse just right, that's entirely true. Which I've gotta say is pretty cool, and it's definitely a myth I'm turning into a reality in future games. Number 9. If nothing else, the pets in Among Us seem like an adorable distraction. And while that's true, I've heard they can do something a little more sinister. You see, common knowledge is that if you want to play as the imposter, you might want to lose one of these little guys. The reason being is that it might just be easier to pick out you if you have one of these by your side. So if we put that to the test, you can actually see that yeah, the pet does make it easier to spot the imposter going in and out of the vent. And that little bit of a breadcrumb trail might be all you need to pinpoint the imposter. Number 10. Thanks to the numerous different references and easter eggs to Henry Stickman, there's been a common perception that the two games are linked in some way. And obviously not just by a developer, because that's true. But rather, in some way the games are both linked in the same universe. And while a few weeks ago I would have said that this was very possible because of all that mountain of evidence, since the new map that's getting added in is straight from Henry Stickman, I think this is all but confirmed. I'd say there's definitely enough here to craft a few game theories or two. 
Number 11. When you're an imposter, sabotaging is one of your main tools. It's understandable that when you see someone go over to fix lights, you're already agitated, because it means you gotta wait for another cooldown. So, wouldn't it be nice if you could sabotage them fixing your sabotage? Well, as it turns out, this myth tactic is actually possible. You see, if you as the imposter pull up the panel, you're able to switch off the switches that they're turning on, and by that, delay the process. The one thing to note is that this is an extremely risky move if you're the only player on the panel. And if they find out that you were the one flicking on and off the switches, then you're pretty much guaranteeing a trip off the ship. Number 12. Despite a handful of players' best wishes, there's no way for imposter chat in the game. So if you're playing in a two imposter lobby and the other person is on the other side of the map, there's really no way to tell what they're doing. That is, unless you look at the kill button. You see, some people say that if you watch the kill button while your teammate gets a kill, you'll actually notice that there's some visual change. And sure enough, if we have our teammate kill, you can see that that button does in fact flicker. So if you manage to see this brief disruption, you might just be able to catch what your imposter teammate's doing. Number 13. When you're playing as the imposter, there's no secret about it. The vents make so much noise. So it seemed that if you're causing that much of a ruckus, the crewmates must be able to hear it, right? Well, as it turns out, that detail isn't the case. As it works currently, if you're playing as a crewmate, then you'll hear no sound for when an imposter moves or opens up a vent. So if you're playing as the antagonist, then rest assured that these actions aren't gonna make any noise. Though I do think it'd be a cool feature if the crewmate were able to listen in and then catch something in the act. Number 14. Visual tasks are their own form of currency for the crewmates, which is why players are always on the lookout for ways to clear their other teammates, and for good reason. So from that, one question that I've seen pop up is if you can clear someone using the vending machine on Mira. I mean, it kind of makes sense, the trash falls out, so why wouldn't the same happen for the drinks? But unfortunately, when you watch another crewmate vend, nothing actually falls down in the machine, so there's no way to clear them at this time, which is about the opposite of what we were hoping for. Number 15. The ghosts in Among Us have a weird amount of interactivity in the maps. I mean, sure, you can phase through walls, but you can also do tasks, so how much are you corporeal here? Well, as it turns out, it is actually true that if you play as a ghost on Mira, you're able to trigger the sliding glass doors. Which is kind of cool, but if you really want to take this to the next level, then you could devise some kind of code system where the ghost goes through however many times through the door and tells you which number of players the killer. And it also gives the ghost that much needed something to do when you're dead. Number 16. While crewmates can't see ghosts, there is a bit of a rumor that there is a way to tell if a ghost is nearby. Apparently, when a ghost scans at medbay, you're able to tell if they're doing it, since it'll make you wait. So if we have one of our dead friends step up to the medbay task, sure enough, you'll see that we're not able to do it as a regular crewmate. And instead, we gotta wait until the ghost takes its turn. Which seems a little unfair. I mean, they've got all eternity on their side, and you still got the rest of your life to live out. But you know what? Maybe this is just a way to pay respects to the dead. Number 17. Attentive players are always champing at the bit to try and find who the imposter is. And more importantly, they're hoping to find that out as soon as possible. So that's gotta be where this theory comes from. The idea is that when you see all of the crew at the beginning of the match, the imposter should always be in the same place. And while that's a nice thought, as you can see after doing multiple tests, it's not exactly the case. The order is always the same as to where the crew appears, but it's most likely based off of join order instead of anything with the imposter. Number 18. Anyone who's played around with the settings for an Among Us match knows that you can actually set the voting time down to zero. Now, when you hear that, you probably think of two different ways where that could work. Option one, where no one has any time to vote at all and you're not able to do anything in the meeting. Or option number two, which is that the players now have infinite time to make sure that every vote is cast. If we set the voting time down to zero, then enter into emergency meeting, sure enough, it is actually infinite until all votes are placed in. Although if this is the solution, I'd still say it works best if we had an infinity sign there instead. Number 19. Visibility in Among Us is a huge thing, and anything that can limit it is called into question, whether that's the lights, the game settings, or one-way doors. There is a myth that even though the door is closed, there is only one way to see the players on the other side. But I'd have to say this is false. While it is easier to see players on the outside from the inside, even if a player is pushed up against the door, those on the out can't actually see them that easily. They'll catch a glimpse of you barely at best. Number 20. A lot of weird scenarios can come around when you play with the Among Us game settings, which might be the reason why some players believe that if you mess around with the player's walk speed on a map like Mira, it actually changes the amount of time you have to fix a reactor meltdown or O2 mishap. And while that would make some sense since you're able to get over to that sabotage faster and fix it quicker, there's actually no change that happens to the game's internal timing. With any setting that you have set, it's going to be 45 seconds to fix the mishap. Number 21. Now, there's a theory that states that you might be able to put the fuel inside the lower engine even if the task says to do the upper engine first. So if you're walking up from storage, you could just hit it along the order of the path. Well, again, logic might favor being able to do the fuel task out of order, 
As it turns out, you gotta do that chore list exactly to the detail. And any wish to fuel the engines out of order is a pipe dream. So even though I might not understand it, this means we gotta confirm this one is false. Number 22. At this point, everyone knows that when the camera is blinking, it means someone's on cams. But is that always the case? You see, it might make sense that if the ghost was on the cams, since you can't see them, you can't see them watching the cameras. Which sounds like an interesting detail, so if we put it to the test, you're not able to see the ghost on the cameras even though they're watching your every move. Which I guess that makes sense, they've already been killed by the imposter, so they're not gonna learn anything new by watching cameras. It'd just be pointless. Number 23. So this one I think stems from a couple of different details getting muddied together. You see, some people say that after you call a meeting, you're able to see the ghosts around the table for a split second right before the meeting starts. Now, in every scenario we tried as a crewmate, there's no way to get this to occur. However, this mistake probably comes from the fact that if you are a ghost and then you get called into a meeting, you are able to see the other ghosts around the meeting. And at that point, it's not too hard to see how someone might conflate the two ideas in their head. Number 24. If you've ever had to do an upload or download task and noticed that it seems like it's taken a little longer this time? Well, it turns out you're not actually wrong. As you can see with these two clips, the task will finish when the character stops walking, not when it reaches 100%, which can cause certain disparities where one upload is so much shorter than the other. So, much like anything on a computer, you can't trust when it actually says 100%, but rather when you see the confirmation box pop up. Number 25. When you use this vent in the bathroom on Polis, it is possible for other players to see your name above the top. Which, obviously, if you're playing as the imposter, isn't ideal. So what if there was a way to glitch through and not actually have that name show? So, to put that theory to the test, we can actually see that if you go a little lower from the vent's actual location and then start the animation, you can glitch the action where they're not actually able to see your name pop up above this particular wall. And it might be particularly helpful if you got a vent in a bind. And with that, folks, bust that red sub button below and have a good one. All right.